Hello everyone and welcome to our last special video. This is going to feature the final week and wildcard tips uh, Canadian Fantasy Premier League is giving us um, one more wildcard going into the final as two more teams have been eliminated. Um, before I get started, if this is going to be my, I think, third last video, I'll do one more for how the finals, uh, or before the finals, and then how the finals went. So please, with three more videos to try to get up the following a bit, so please hit the uh, subscribe button on the YouTube channel and follow the Instagram account and the Twitter account. Um, Instagram account is campl underscore forged and fire, and the Twitter account's at Dan Giannotti. Um, but I think the account I want to get most going is the YouTube one, so please subscribe to that. It's not that hard. Just click the red button. Don't got to worry about it again. Okay, but uh, getting into this, so I hope what I have to say is uh, Credible last week did not go well for me. I'll get more into it in the uh, video before the final recap in the week, but drop Bustos and Blasco for that, and Bustos had a part to do on four goals, and Blasco scored the fifth. Fifth. So that decision-making wasn't that great, so whether you want to trust this decision-making or not, or these tips, that's going to be up to you. Um, but going ahead, we got a Forge and Halifax final. Congrats to both teams, especially Halifax. A lot of people probably didn't even peg them to uh, make the final four, never mind the final two, and potentially win it. They're looking strong still, except for last night. They looked awful. Um, but obviously Hart uh, put a B squad out there to rest the heavy hitters for the most part. Although they did still have some uh, better players than such as Morelli and stuff. Um, but moving forward, I have about four or five tips here that will hopefully help you for the final week. First one is put your money on the field. I know me personally um, am going to just hope that my starting 11 plays for the most part and I'm going to do that by putting as much money as I can into that starting 11. This is going to be the uh, final game for both of these teams of the tournament. It's the finals. The winner gets the North Star Shield. They are not going to be holding back and rotating players based on what's happened so far. The, we're going to see the best starting 11 for both of these teams. So what does that mean? We're probably going to see Edgar Crutzen, um, Aua, maybe uh, Tiso somewhere, um, maybe Samuel. I don't know. They, maybe a f uh, fourth defender there for Forge is a little bit iffy. But we're going to see Becker and Sabak in there. Um, the striker might still hard, be uh, hard to tell. Uh, my guess would be Novak. He started the most games and seems to be uh, Bobby Smiriotis' favorite. Um, but we could see Babuli because I would have thought that he'd be the standout from the start of the uh, season. And he played pretty well against Cavalry scoring his goal. So in Forge, there may be still some areas that might be a little challenging to predict, uh, especially the wingers as well. But you'll have a good idea who the main starters are. On Halifax, you know we're going to have Garcia and Morelli. Um, uh, Rampersad's played a lot of games. You're going to have Chale, Oxner. Henry's going to start for uh, Forge, obviously. So you kind of know who's going to be seeing the field. And I'm going to be putting a starting 11 out of players that I believe are going to be seeing the field that game. You, ha you can pick up to six of each one. Um, and yeah, so... You just kind of got, I guess, five or six, depending on what way you're going. I'm going six on one, five on the other. I think that's actually the only way you can do it. Yeah, math. Uh, anyway, and so that last comment that I have there is the bench should have the least possible money on it. So my bench is going to have four players of the lowest value. And that means I'm going to be having players that are not on teams. I am going to, for my backup goalie, I know this kind of contradicts what I said the last wild card tip video of having uh, them both from the same team. Um, but this is just one game. We know the two goalies that are going to be starting this game. It's not hard. Uh, in the only way this backfires is if um, a, uh, one of the keepers gets injured during the warm up of the game. Because even if he gets injured in training over the next two days, you can still swap it out. It's a wild card. You have many transfers as you want. Um, so the only way is if they get injured during the time that our team is locked and the starting whistle, really. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have a goalie that's worth 10k. Uh, def uh, like, and all my subs are going to be worth 10k or as little as possible. Um, so that means I'm probably, I think, 
I've put in my backup goalie right now is Zobra Zemo from Ottawa. I, obviously, he's not going to be playing, but he is going to be what allows me to have the most money in my starting 11. So that's kind of what I mean by budgeting and putting your money in the starting 11. Here we have know your position, and that's what I'm talking about is position in the leaderboards. And uh, to the right, there's just a picture of a screenshot at a top 10, I believe, right now. And, you know, if you are at the top, you do not want people to pass you. And therefore, having a lot of similar players to other people is going to work to your benefit. That means nobody can get points on you with those players unless they have them captained and you don't. Um, so the higher you are, probably the more you want to be similar to other teams. But if you're chasing, you need those differentials. And, um, yeah, you need to know how many differentials to pick. I mean, it's not like there's a set number. It depends how players do. Obviously, there's no point of taking someone like, I don't know, Zajac, who has done literally nothing for Forge, basically, even since last year at the start of the season. So that's not really a safe one. But um, maybe like a Marshall, if he ends up, he, he's had potential. Um, who else would be one? I don't know if I'd consider Shornier one. I think like a lot of people are kind of spread out between the wingers. So that could be one. Um, a lot of people with Forge's pedigree and price might go with Henry over Oxner, but although Oxner I think is more expensive, less people might have him, so that might be the way to go. Um, so those are the kind of things I'm talking about. And um, yeah, you just have to sometimes hope that they're going to have a breakout game that a lot of people won't see coming if you're climbing the table. So know your position, know how similar your teams want to be, if you can afford just taking the safe players that everyone might have, or if you need to get creative. Captaincy is absolutely massive this week. So, like I keep saying, there's gonna you're going to have six Forge and five uh, Halifax or vice versa. As I think that makes the most sense. Unless you're going to spend, like, take some blanks intentionally in order to have uh, more heavy hitters in the team. That could be a strategy as well. I guess I didn't really think of that until now, but could be a strategy. Um... But picking that captain is huge because you know basically everyone is going to have Becker. You know everyone is going to have Garcia and Morelli probably. Um, so depending on which one you captain, if Garcia goes and scores four goals, yeah, everyone will have those four goals. But if you captained him, that's a, four more goals than you'll get more than anyone that didn't captain Garcia for that week. So captaincy is huge this week, as that's probably what's going to differentiate the points between people, is the captaincy. Going on is looking for team news over the course of this week. If there is any, sometimes coaches are pretty good at hiding their team selection, but predicting starting players is crucial for this week. If your players aren't starting, they're getting 20 minutes or nothing, especially if you don't have a player playing players on the bench, then you're going to be taking blanks. And that's going to really hurt you this week. So some sources, Center Circle, they might have interviews where they might say some things. One Soccer has programs. And uh, Canadian Premier League Fantasy also comes out sometimes with uh, notices about players. They had the notice about the DQR suspension, some injuries and stuff. So they also have things too. So check out their Twitter page in case anything's popping up from them and follow them. And yeah, that's my uh, thing there. I mean... I think both of these coaches are pretty secretive about their lineups for the most part, um, but there could be something big that happens in the news. God forbid Sabak breaks his leg during training. I'm sure that would be announced at some point. Um, so just little things like that. And for the last one is don't give up. You never know what can happen in a week. Um, like I said, you, who knows? Someone could have the similar performance that Bustos did, and if it's a differential, you might end up in first by the end of the week. If it's Garcia, well, hopefully you had him captained. If, and so yeah, anything can happen like that. If, again, Crutzen's another example. Uh, who knows? He might get a clean sheet, a goal, and an assist. Like you never know. And these are huge point hauls for these players that can swing it totally. Like before that. Uh, uh, Halifax game yesterday, I was in 14th, and now I'm in the mid-30s, just because of all of the damage Bustos did, as well as the Blasco goal. So, one game can have a huge swing in the standings. And these are just little hypotheticals that I had that would be similar to, 
Garcia can score four goals. Sabak is a penalty taker. Forge could get two penalties. All of a sudden, he's got two easy goals there. One of your keepers could have a PK save. And more than one of these things can happen. So these are all things that you can't really predict necessarily before the game. You can only hope for, and it could be make a big swing in the standings. Points come fast and furious in fantasy. Sometimes it's slow, but we're hoping it's fast for this last week. So some things uh, shake up, especially if you have these players captain. Anyone that had Bustos captain yesterday is loving life right now. Anyway. That's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it. Like I said, please support the following. Just a couple more videos left and one more week of fantasy. Thank you for watching so far. I hope these little suggestions have helped and that you didn't follow me too, too much in this past week because that wouldn't have ended well. And enjoy your wild card. Wild cards are always fun. It's like a fresh start. It's just rare that in fantasies you only get to choose between two teams, but... Hey, it's a new experience, it's fun in its own ways, and we'll see what happens in the final. Hopefully, at the end of the day, it doesn't look like I'm going to be winning the uh, league, so hopefully at least Forge gets me their second title as a fan. Take care, everyone, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.